Friends, today we are going to discuss about a statistical test called chi-square test. It's a non-parametric test which measures the discrepancy between theory and the observed. We are going to understand the concept of chi-square on the basis of this example. This example shows that there are 1000 randomly selected fields and it gives the information about tenancy status of the fields as well as the use of fertilizers. We have to prove in this case whether the owner's cultivator is more inclined to use fertilizers at 5% of level. The process of chi-square starts with stating the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis in this case is that the ownership of the land as well as the use of fertilizers are two independent attributes. That is, the ownership is not at all affecting the use of fertilizers in this particular case. However, the alternate hypothesis indicates that the ownership of the fields and the fertilizers are dependent variable or we can say there, are, there exists a relationship between how the owners are using fertilizers on their fields. The next step is calculation of the expected count because we have to see whether there is any discrepancy existing between the observed count of the sample as well as the expected count of the sample. So how do we calculate this expected count? The expected count is calculated by taking the row total which is in this case for row 1 equal to 416 plus 184 equal to 600. Whereas for row 2 it is 64 plus 336 equal to 400. Now the column total in this case will be for column 1 416 plus 64 equal to 480 and 184 plus 336 equal to 520 for column number 2. So let's see how we calculate the expected count. For particular set of ownership and use of fertilizers, we have the row total equal to 600, we take the row total and we have the column total equal to 480, we take the column total and then divide it by the table total which is 1000. So we are dividing it by 1000. This gives us the value of expected count for this particular set equal to 288. Similarly, we calculate the expected count for the another set of rented and using fertilizer by taking the row total of 600, column total of 520, multiplying these two values and then dividing it by 1000. That's how we get the expected count for each of the set. Once we know the expected count, we have to take the difference between observed count as well as the expected count. This table shows all the data which is there for in the sample, observed sample. This is the expected count as calculated in step 2. Next step is finding the difference between observed and expected which is 416 minus 288 equal to 128. 64 minus 192 equal to 128. I am taking the absolute values ignoring the positive and the negative because ultimately we have to square observed minus expected values. The square of 128 comes out to be 16,384. Same with this 16,384. So we calculate observed minus expected square. Once we are done with this step, we go on to calculating observed minus expected square divided by expected. So it will be 16,384 divided by 288 which will be 56.889. Similarly with this case it will be 16,384 divided by 192 which will be equal to 85.333. That's how we calculate the observed minus expected square by expected for each of the values. With this, we get the sum of observed minus expected square divided by expected, which will be equal to 273.504. So, our chi-square calculated will be equal to 273.504. Now, the next step will be one determining of the degrees of freedom. In this case, the degree of freedom will be row, number of rows minus 1 multiplied by number of columns minus 1. So number of rows in this case are 2. No row number 1 and row number 2. Columns are also 2. Column number 1, column number 2. So we calculate degree of freedom 
equal to row minus 1 multiply by column number column minus 1 which will be 2 minus 1 multiply by 2 minus 1 which will be equal to 1. Once we know the degrees of freedom and the level which is given as 0 0.05, we know we can calculate the chi-square critical value. How do we do that? We have to take a look at the tables given at the end of the book and we can take the particular combination of degree of freedom equal to 1 and alpha equal to 0 0.05 which means we are 95% confident. So we can see the critical value comes out to be 3.84. We can express this value on a chart and this critical value segregates the rejection region from the non-rejection region. So this becomes the accepted region and the area lying to the right of it will be rejection region. Once we know the critical value, we can place the calculated value and see whether it lies in the rejection region. We can easily see that this value of 273.504 lies in the rejection region and hence we reject the null hypothesis. We can also prove that chi-square critical, whenever that value is less than chi-square calculated, we always reject null hypothesis. In this case, when we reject null hypothesis, it means that ownership of the land and the use of fertilizers are not independent attributes. Thank you so much for this tutorial.